shared in excerpts. Millennials, multi-generation. These are just some of the terms that we are going to hear in the second. And welcome to the Leader's Edge, where we give actionable insights to help you thrive in a new normal. A fantastic day to all of you. This is Sassy Casas, and I am happy to be back in this episode of The Leader's Edge. We're here again to learn because that's what we're all about, you see. We're all, we're all about learning. We are in for a wonderful episode tonight. Welcome to Season 5, Episode 4. And welcome to Leader's Edge Season 4, Episode 10. Welcome to The Leader's Edge. And today, it's Season 7, Episode 8. It's called The Leader's Edge. We are here tonight with another amazing leader. Good day, everyone across the world. Uh, welcome to The Leader's Edge. Welcome to the third episode, Season 5, of The Leader's Edge. Good evening, and thank you for joining the Santa Clubs of Paranaque and Las Piñas in our joint culminating activity for the International Women's Month. Uplifting women to be complete and priceless is our way of leaving an imprint in the lives of our fellow Santians and friends as three women inspire us with their stories, aspirations, and affirmations to become even more empowered than what we all are today. And we are fortunate to have as partner for this event, the Southeast Asia Speakers and Trainers Bureau, Inc., a premier provider of quality training and consultancy services, committed and competent to give the people the winning edge. This is Attorney Rosario Calixto Chavez, Chito for short, Charter President of the Santa Club of Paranaque, your Master of Ceremonies for tonight's webinar. So welcome to a night of wonderful learning and sharing. And to start tonight's activity, may I ask everyone to please join me in the Santa prayer to be followed by Lupang Hinirang and the Santa hymn. We thank the Father, Father for your blessings, for your blessings and, for and for your, your gracious, gracious loving care. care. Help, Help, Help us, us to honor, honor Santa's Santa Santa good to be all things fair and fair and, fair and, fair and, and grant our prayers, prayers for last and last day, day, for all nations, for all nations, and all nations everywhere. everywhere. May I first mute everyone, huh? Uh, do you, can you do that? I cannot mute, see all. Oh, okay. Mute all. Can you mute? Let me see. I'm actually... Noon pa man, malaki na ang naging bahagi ng mga kababaihan sa lipunang Pilipino. Kaisa sila sa marubdob na paghahangad ng kalayaan ng ating lahi. Kabilang sila sa paglinang ng ating makulay na sining at mayamang kultura. Kasapi sila sa pagtataguyod ng mga adhikain ng kapwa mamamayan at sa pagtugon sa mga pangangailangan ng lipunan. Katuwang sila sa pagtukla sa mga larangan ng agham at medisina. Kapanalig sila sa pagpapairal ng batas, karapatan at katarungan para sa lahat. Kabahagi sila sa paglilingkod sa bayan at sa pagpapanatili ng demokrasyang Pilipino. Sa paglipas ng panahon, hindi nagmaliw ang kanilang pag-ibig sa ating inang bayan. Mga kababayan, ito ang alay ng mga kababaihang Pilipino para sa bayan. Tumayo po tayong lahat at sabay-sabay nating awitin ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Kami 
Okay, and before we proceed, may I again welcome to a night, everyone to a night of wonderful learning and sharing and to formally open tonight's International Women's Month celebration, may I call on Maria Cristina Tintin Barreto, president of the Santa Club of Paranaque for her opening remarks. Thank you, Chico. Feminism isn't about making women strong. Women are already strong. It's about changing the way the world per perceives that strength. Strong women don't play victim, don't make themselves look pitiful, and don't point fingers. They stand and they deal. There is nothing stronger than a broken woman who has rebuilt herself. Whatever you fear most has no power. It is your fear that has the power. These are some of the quotes of illustrious women who never dreamed about success but worked hard for it. And tonight, we are privileged to have with us three esteemed women who walked through the course that they took, overcame all obstacles, and remained for focus on their goals and aspirations to become the successful persons they are today. We shall also share our best practices and experiences through the Q&A portion to learn from each other as we work together towards the advancement of the objectives of Santa International in empowering women and girls in the respective communities that we serve. Magandang gabi sa inyong lahat. Wow, what a powerful and impactful opening remarks. And to acknowledge our guests, may I call on District Secretary Carolina Balotro of the Santa Club of Las Piñas. Good evening, dear Sanchez and friends. It is my pleasure and honor to acknowledge and welcome our esteemed Sanchez and friends who are joining us tonight, led by the presidents of the two host clubs, Maria Cristina Tintin Barreto of the Zonta Club of Paranaque and Angela Gigi Libranda of the Zonta Club of Las Piñas. The honor is ours also to welcome our dear um, District Governor Chavali Pam Osatanugra, who I think will be joining later, I hope, because she's in Phuket right now, and our District Parliamentarian and Zonta International Past President, Olivia Levy Aguinaldo Ferry. We also would like to welcome our District uh, Treasurer, Susan Lim, our Area 5 Director, Lizette Lim, and Area 3 Director, Terry Apistar. We have, of course, had the honor to welcome our guest speakers, Ms. Tinette Cortez and Ms. Dinah Loomis, who will be properly introduced later on. It is also my pleasure to acknowledge the presence of my co-chair and regional representative for Area for Asia of Zonta International Leadership Development Committee, Sonia Chong Aquino, um, member of Zonta International Z and Golden Z Clubs Committee past, uh, committee, past Area 4 Director, Lorna Mandapat, past Chair of Zonta International JMK Scholarship Committee, and past Area Director, Lourdes Sese, um, let us also welcome the uh, District United Nations Committee Chair, past District Governor Georgita Benkuyat, District Finance Committee Chair Francis Nani Monje, past District Governor Primitiva Pere, Baby Perez Season, past Area Three Direct, past Area Six Director Palarp Sinhaseni from Bangkok, Vice Area Five Director Odette Wallace. Area 5 Vice Chair for Z and Golden Z Club Committee, Maria Teresa Palacios. Area 3 Vice Chair for Young Women and Public Affairs Committee, Elisa Torres. 
Area 5 Secretary, Ansi Palma, Organizing Committee Chairman of tonight's webinar, Charter President Rosario Chito Chavez, Organizing Committee Co-Chair and Club Advocacy Chair, Isabel Gonzalez from Zonta Club of Paranaque. Of course, we, would, we are pleased to welcome the club presidents and past presidents of the Zonta Clubs in areas five, four, three, and one, and to the officers and members of the host clubs, the Zonta Clubs of Prañaque and Las Piñas and other Zonta Clubs and fellow Zontians. Thank you too to our Z and Golden Z Club advisors and members and officers and our special friends for attending tonight's webinar. I hope you have an enjoyable night. Thank you. And to set the pace for tonight's webinar, we will be joined by a staunch supporter of women's rights, a community organizer who has been recognized for her various strategic campaigns on no to violence against women and girls and to early marriage. She's a prominent figure in women's organizations, having served in different capacities in Thai Women Watch and attaining highest position as president in International Women's Club of Thailand and the Pan-Pacific and Southeast Asia Women's Association of Thailand, now in her second term. Born in the USA and raised in the USA, Switzerland, and England, and with a solid educational background, a bachelor's degree in history and political science obtained from Goucher College in Baltimore, Maryland, master's degree in business administration from Bangkok University, as well as a track record in international and foreign service. Working as an intern in the United Nations Headquarters USA and the Royal Thai Embassy in Washington, D.C. in the first few years of her career. It was not surprising why this woman, only in her first year or first biennium 2010 to 2012 in Santa, was already appointed District 17's United Nations Vice Chair for Area 6 even before assuming the president's position by Union 2012 to 2014, finally to becoming our district governor this 2020 to 2022. It is therefore my distinct honor and privilege to present Governor Chavali Pam Osatunagra to deliver an inspirational message. Zonda Club of Paranaque President, Maria Cristina Barreto. Zonda Club of Las Piñas President, Angela Libranda. Speakers and Trainers Bureau President and CEO, Ms. Dina Loomis. Global Coach Trainer, Ms. Tinette R. Cortez. The Zonda Club of Paranaque Charter President, Rosario Chito Chavez. Past Area 5 Director and District 17 Secretary, Carolina Balotro, Zonta dignitaries, all protocols observed, and dear fellow Zonchans, greetings from Phuket, Thailand, and a very pleasant evening to you all. Thank you, Zonta Club of Paranaque and the Zonta Club of Las Piñas, in partnership with the Southeast Asia Speakers and Trainers Bureau Incorporated for organizing this very significant event in celebration of International Women's Month and Zonta Rose Day, International Women's Day, this past 8 March. Thank you for inviting me to deliver this inspirational message. I am honored. Personally, for me, every day is Women's Day. All women out there, it is our day every day of the year. Therefore, be grateful and do what we can to empower each other, to stand strong and in solidarity in order to empower other women and girls. Every day, we think, we formulate and initiate plans. We implement those plans. How can we improve the livelihood for girls and women on how to make this world a better place for them. 
we start right here within our families, within our immediate communities. In this way, we create small ripples, which become larger and larger to include the wider communities of women and girls. I am privileged to be sharing the virtual platform this evening with such esteemed speakers. The first Filipina Lady Governor of Toastmasters International, Ms. Dina Loomis, and Global Coach Trainer, Ms. Tinette Cortez, both of whom are extremely successful in her respective careers, having penetrated the glass ceiling and so deserve to be emulated by aspiring young women. The 2022 International Women's Day theme is Champions of Change. This theme resonates with all of us virtually present today. This includes our esteemed speakers and we Zonchians. We are active agents or champions of change. Through our Zonta education programs, we ensure that girls and young women are equipped with an education, enabling them to be economically and financially independent later on in their lives. We, all of us here, instill in young women a sense of purpose and in believing in themselves that they are as important as men and can do anything a man does even better. The topic of today's event is very relevant, particularly in COVID times, uplifting women to be complete and sorry. little more than half of the world's population of 7.9 billion and here in Thailand with a population of 69.9 million we also comprise of more than half of the population therefore we women do need change and our persistent collective voices for that change to materialize for gender equality in all aspects of life, for a more fair and just society for women, where women deserve to receive vis-a-vis -vis our male counterparts, equal pay for equal work, and where no woman or girl should live in fear of violence. Our voices shall continue to ring loud and clear. In reality, we still have a long way to go. The COVID pandemic has exacerbated the gender inequality, but our plans have been not shelved, but pushed back. According to the World Economic Forum's Gender Gap Report in 2021, it may take us another 135.6 years to close that gender gap. However, we must remain optimistic, patient, focused, and resilient, and continue to work towards that attainable goal for a brighter future and an, an equitable and better society for all, and we are all working together in this endeavor. Thank you once again for organizing this important event and for having me with you virtually this evening. With my very best wishes for good health for you all and a fruitful and successful IWD 2022 event. Thank you. As we are nearing the end of Biennium 2020 to 2022, and being an International Women's Month, 
the Santa Clubs of Paranaque and Las Piñas have found it more fitting and significant to pay tribute now to our dear Governor Shavali Palm Osata Nugra, whose exemplary leadership, hard work, and continued support have propelled December 17, uh, District 17 to mar remarkable performance in Santa International amidst the unprecedented challenges brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic. May I then present our Certificate of Appreciation to Governor Chavali Pamela Osatanugra as we pay tribute to her as a staunch supporter of women's rights who believes that for empowerment, empowerment of women to be effective, empowering each other is necessary. Given on the occasion of this International Women's Month celebration, this 26th day of March 2022, Manila, Philippines. Signed, Maria Cristina C. Barreto, President, Santa Club of Paranaque, Angela D. Libranda, President, Santa Club of Las Piñas. And moving on now to the main part of the program. And before we start, May I just ask you all, in the interest of time, as we are going to have Q&A portion, to please start writing your questions in the chat box as you listen to the speakers. Please make sure to write your name and the club or organization where you are a member of. Thank you. And to introduce our first speaker for tonight, May I call on Pauline Plata Bondad, our new member in the Santa Club of Paranaque, and now finishing her term this month as president of Soroptimist International Batangas Downtown. Good evening, everyone. Jeanette Cortes, an international speaker, a personal development mentor, and a training consultant, fostering transformation for personal and organizational excellence. She coaches and inspires high-level executives, entrepreneurs, and self-employed professionals from over 30 countries to perform competitively in the global business landscape. She is the founder and CEO of Consult Asia Global, a training and development consulting firm with headquarters in London, and representative offices in the Philippines, Canada, and Australia. With over 25 years of experience in luxury, hospitality, business consulting, corporate training, and social entrepreneurship, she has successfully created world-class customer service, sales and leadership training solutions for the most demanding high-profile clients. Known for her values-based leadership practices, she continues to develop strong strategic partnerships with key organizations and set the stage for industry experts, consultants, and speakers of diverse backgrounds to connect with and serve reputable companies through Consel Asia. Tinet graduated with distinction from the University of Oxford's Said Business School in the United Kingdom, holding a master's level executive diploma in, business, in global business. She holds a certificate for coaching international students from the Northeastern University in the United States, a certificate in international leadership from Silver Tower Trade Training in Australia, in a degree in Bachelor of Arts, major in psychology from the Ateneo de Manila University. Ms. Tenet is a solo parent to her 18-year-old daughter, Sophia, actively supporting various charitable institutions with her personal mission to educate, equip, and empower the less privileged solo parents and children to lead better lives. Ladies, let's all welcome Ms. Tinet R. Cortez. Thank you so much, Ms. Pauline, for that wonderful introduction. Good evening, ladies. 
it is an absolute privilege to be here sharing my life story and lessons with you. So thank you so much uh, to the Zonta family for having me here. I also would like to personally thank Ms. Diana Loomis for inviting me to share this virtual platform with her. And of course, to Ms. Isabel Gonzalez, who has been coordinating with me the past two days. So thank you so much. Um, to all the ladies uh, here with us tonight, thank you so much for the warm welcome. So we ourselves, or perhaps women we know, might have been experiencing what I experienced, which I am going to be happily sharing with you tonight. So I shall be uh, sharing my screen. And my talk tonight actually aims to awaken the victor in you. And that would be how to survive an abusive relationship, escape, rise, and be successful in life. I know it, it is a very difficult topic to talk about sometimes among families, among friends, but if uh, any one of you or your loved ones uh, are going through this, it might be worth listening to, it might be worth reaching out to them and just encouraging them to open up. Um, it, if there's actually one image that could represent my life story, it would be this a tree that could have easily decomposed or ended up being burned or probably thrown away with its few couple of roots, if you could see at the end, strongly connected to the soil. It continued, it continued to grow, give life, and bear fruit. These roots actually represent the three major decisions that I personally made after surviving a horrendous and terrible domestic violence experience. In a marriage of only almost two years, I suffered the worst that one could ever imagine. I'm a survivor of domestic violence, physical, mental, verbal, emotional, name it. I've gone through it. I was in this marriage only for a short time. And what's really, really interesting is that it started only on our wedding day when we were just a boyfriend and when we were in a boyfriend and girlfriend relationship it was the best relationship ever people were so envious my friends were envious they were so happy for me and on my wedding day instead of having a romantic evening after the ceremony it turned out to be my worst nightmare but of course as any woman would do we would try to save our marriage i wanted to have a happy marriage just like my parents who actually were still holding hands until the last breath that they had. Uh, they both passed away recently, and at 88 years old, they were still very romantic with each other. And I've always thought of marriage to be that. And so I couldn't take it upon myself to accept that I was actually in a totally different world at that time. And so I kept fighting for the marriage. But you know what, when I gave birth, my baby was actually almost turning one at that time. And she was very young. She was too young to understand anything, but she was crying all the time. And I thought maybe it's because she could feel she was very distressed. She was feeling the, the tension and the violence and the, just the negativity in our household. And that was when I said to myself, okay, I really have to think twice if I'm going to be in this marriage or am I going to go out? So anyway, you know, it, it, it just went on and on. But people would ask me, Tinette, why have, why have you waited this long before you're even thinking about moving out? And I said, well, you know, as, as everybody would always say, he might change. This is probably an isolated case. In fact, I even came to a point that I was blaming myself. I was questioning myself. I was probably thinking, oh, maybe I was lacking something. Maybe I'm not that much of a good cook. Maybe I'm not that much of a sweet wife. And so I was really blaming myself for everything. But ultimately, the reason behind that is I wanted a complete family. Because again, in my, in my world, my siblings were happily married. My parents were happily married. Why is their youngest child or youngest sibling going through this? And so when I thought about it, um, I tried to reflect on it. And I realized that that pattern in my marriage was reflective of my 
relationship with my four brothers. I grew up with four older brothers. I was the youngest and growing up, uh, there has always been that uh, bullying uh, session with my brothers. They would always say, oh, you, you get the, the smallest piece of chicken because you're the girl. Oh, you cannot join us because you're a girl. So I've always had that mental um, script. And I thought, okay, just because I'm a girl, I'll allow my brothers to bully me or to, to control me. And so that was, my parents were both busy at that time when we were very, very young. So, so growing up, I was an overachiever in school, but what I didn't know was it was slowly killing my self-esteem. I was slowly losing my self-respect. I was slowly losing my self-love. And that came out in the marriage. And so that was where I thought, okay, I, in my marriage, I was sticking to my husband because I, want, I had that longing to be validated by a man. And, and this was really after so many days and so many weeks and even probably months of thinking, why am I in this predicament and why am I allowing it? So instead of me really just focusing on, oh, he's doing this, he's doing that, I did a lot of self-reflection. And so one thing that I realized is that victim mentality was not doing me any good. And that was where I said, you know what, Jeanette? Choose to be the victor, not the victim. As soon as I posted this saying on my room, on my um, room wall, inside my room where I could see it every day, on my laptop, on my cell phone, this actually started to give me some courage to hmm, really reflect what is the victor mentality. And the victor mentality really is for you to not focus on your pain first, but really focus on what is the purpose? What is your purpose for being here in this world in the first place? Are you here just to be bullied and to be hurt and to be battered every single day, to be verbally abused? Is that your, your destiny? Or is it to raise this wonderful daughter and show her what a strong, capable, respectable woman should be? And that was when I decided, you know what? It, may be, it might be painful, it might be difficult, it might be embarrassing, especially to our relatives who have this uh, sort of stigma for separated uh, women in our family. Because again, my aunties, my, my cousins are all so traditional, so conservative, that nobody's separating from their husbands, even if they feel that they cannot leave their husbands. But here I am raising a daughter, what would she think? If, if she sees her father beat up her mother, that's actually me telling her that, you know what, Sophia, when you grow up, this is how your husband should treat you. And that thought really scared everything in my head, in my heart, in my soul. And that was where I did a lot of thinking, a lot of thinking. In fact, I was having a conversation with myself. I consulted professionals, lawyers, uh, psychologists, psychiatrists, priests, spiritual leaders, just to guide me. What should I do? Because I was just so scared. But you know what? I realized that the only person who can make that massive decision is myself. I literally had to connect to the higher version or the higher self in me. Of course, that's God. I was really connecting with God and asking him, please help me. What should I do? And again, even during that time, I was trying to save it. But you know what? I realized I have to set my boundaries, my self-boundaries. I had to change my life script. I had to change my, my, my self-esteem. I needed to develop self-love and self-respect. Of course, it, I can go on and on to share the whole story. But in a nutshell, I told myself, if my faith is bigger than my fear, I'll be okay. And so at that time, the voice that kept playing in my head is that, Tanette, get out, but think outside yourself and do something outside yourself. And I just didn't know what that meant. I just kept praying, Lord, what, what are you trying to tell me? Get out, but think outside yourself and do something outside yourself. So literally, I got, I got out, <laughs> moved out. For a couple of months, I went back to my parents in Quezon City. At that time, we were living in... Uh, in uh, Valle Verde, in Pasig. And I went back to my parents, called them, I said, Mom, Dad, um, can I just 
stay there. And so they were used to me saying that when Sophia and I would spend the weekend and they were like, okay, of course, come over. And literally after about an hour, there was this truck with all our stuff, my furniture, my refrigerator, everything was there. And my parents were so shocked. They were like, what's happening? And that was where I started to cry. I just hugged my dad and my mom. I couldn't even speak. I was shaking with a one-year-old baby with, with a truck behind me with no words to say. And they just hugged me and they just said, come, come. And after they said, come, oh my God, I broke down and just really cried. And I said, you know what, dad, mom, I, I'm, I'm just going to need a couple of months here. And they said, okay, okay. And they never asked me anything until I was okay to explain everything. <clears throat> that was when I made the decision that I was out of that marriage. So what did I do? Funny, because when I was, when I was staying with my parents, people were still trying to reach out to me. I actually left my job. I was working in a five-star hotel as sales manager. And I left my job, really, completely. Turned my life around completely gave up everything that reminded me of my ex-husband because he used to pick me up from work. I didn't want to see that hotel anymore. And so people were still trying to call me, Kinnat, can you help me look for a job? Can you help me find a job? And I said, I myself am jobless, so I can't help you. So after a while, when I was thinking to myself, okay, what can I do so that I am not useless? I am not just declining people who are needing my help. That was where I thought, okay, I love going to the spa. Most of my salary was spent in uh, going to the spas in the past. And so I decided I would set up a spa business, a spa and a salon business. But this time, hiring only domestically abused women. Why did I do that? Um, the recruiter that I spoke to, she was asking me, ma'am, are you sure that you wanted me to hire this kind of women? I said, why not? She goes, well, you might want to hire somebody who has license from the DOH or certificate from TESDA. And I'm like, no, I, I, I want somebody who has no, um, who has not been able to finish elementary school. I want somebody from a very poor background, probably from the slums of Payatas or Tondo. I don't care. And I want somebody who is domestically abused by their husband who could not get out. And the recruiter was like shaking her head. And I said, I'm going to give you anything, give you any amount, just help me do this. And so with the little money that I have left from my salary, from my savings, I started to set up this spa. And lo and behold, with, with only six women, came to our house with um, wearing slippers, dirty feet, no confidence, sad faces. And I said, are you looking for a job? And they said, yes, but nobody would take us because we're not educated. And I said, perfect. You're exactly what I'm looking for. The only requirement I have is that you have to have a dream and that you want to help your children. And they started bursting into tears. They just kept crying. And, and um, I said, you know what? I'm going to have you trained. And so to cut the long story short, that business flourished. Ricky Reyes, on this picture, featured it on ABS-CBN because the whole concept of this business is just really to empower women, especially those who are marginalized in society. Just by watching these women grow and start earning their dignity back was really helping me personally. It was making me heal like anything, 1,000-fold. I didn't imagine, I didn't have to go through a psychiatrist to help me. <laughs> I'll go through the trauma. I mean, just looking at them, I was thinking they're also domestically abused but they didn't have the privilege of go going to school. Here I am with a degree from the Ateneo in college, and I'm complaining? What's your problem, Danette? I mean, really, it, it just changed my perspective. And, and that put me in a position of being powerful in terms of helping. I didn't feel like I didn't have anything to share. And so that just kept going. I had this business for four years. And when the kids of these women were starting to come to me and say, Tita Tinet, Mam Tinet, Ate Tinet, whatever they used to call me, thank you because I'm now able to go to school because my mom has a job. Thank you because my mom doesn't beat me up anymore. She's a happy woman. So, so hearing that from the kids, I asked myself, Tinet, how could you stop? So I just kept going and going and going until 
we were able to sign contracts with various hotels because of my connections. Um, I was able to um, seal the deal with boutique hotels who didn't have spas and salons in their facility until one group of businessmen said, you know what, I like, we like your concept. We're going to offer to buy you out. I was so shocked. I said, okay, well, what's the win for the ladies? I wasn't even thinking of the win for me because, I mean, I'm okay. And they said, well, the win for the ladies is that we're going to make sure that the contract is going to be the same. But this time, it's going to be on a more massive scale. I didn't need a lot of convincing. I said yes. And now, up to now, they are still doing it. It's white-labeled spa, but it, they're helping a lot of women. Um, now they have an app, a mobile app, uh, helping hotels um, have this kind of service. So it's beautiful. Um, that same group that bought me out talked to me after and said, Jeanette, you know what? Because they actually own some boutique hotels in Luzon. And they said, um, will you be able to help us out, like at least train the, you know, the, the hotel staff, not the spa staff, but the hotel staff. And I said, training in what? And they said, oh, um, training in terms of improving their service. So I said, okay, before I commit, let me think about it. So what is the lesson in this whole story of setting up this spa, hiring only domestically abused women? Really, the decision that I made was to turn my deepest pain into my life purpose. My deepest pain was this being a victim. Oh, poor me, you know, this poor girl being beaten by her husband, beaten up by her husband. You know, oh, look at me, please help me. I've just turned my life around and said, you know what, Tanet? You still have hands, you have, you have feet, you have eyes, ears, nose, mouth. You can do something. And so I made that as my life purpose, to help people. And so I did the training for that hotel. It's funny because one after the other, that training stint became a real deal for like a full year until I set up Consult Asia, which is now my training company, which has been going on for 12 years now. And really, the aim of this company is just to continue to help others feel better about their personal and professional lives. So I've gone training um, hotels, real estate companies, and other industries. I, it was not part of the plan. Ladies, to be honest, I had no idea what I was doing. I was just embracing with faith everything that was being presented in front of me. I always said yes, because I know that if an opportunity comes, if an opportunity comes, I can always make it work. I had that script. I am no longer a victim. I'm a victor. So that's really the lesson. Lesson number two or decision number two that I took was really to be passionate about helping and adding value to others. I was helping these poor ladies, but I was also helping these multimillionaires who were who owned hotels. So for me, there was really no limit to the amount of help or to the quality of help that I can extend to other people. Somebody from this background can come to me and I'll say, yes, why not? Somebody will say, okay, I'd like you to do this, why not? So it's really the mindset that changed. And as soon as I changed the mindset, the circumstances changed. That is how, and I realized I have been attracting abuse into my life for so long because of the mental script, because of the self-esteem, because of the language that I use every time. Oh, poor me. Oh, could you help me? Oh, I don't have enough. It's just that scarcity mindset that I had that kept me attracting these abusers and per perpetrators in my life. And so that was where I said, okay, Consult Asia was already booming here in the Philippines. And then I traveled one time to the UK and then I met some, um, our uh, dear OFWs over there. And listening to their stories just broke my heart because they said, oh, you know what? Oh, this is what we post on uh, social media. This is what our family knows, uh, but uh, our families know, but this is the reality. And they are really living a very difficult life. And I said, why is that? Oh, because we're not given the chance to get a proper job here in the UK. I said, why is that? Because some of them are teachers, engineers, um, accountants, and they were working there as nannies. I mean, nothing, nothing wrong with being a nanny, but I mean, really, they were already working for prestigious companies here. I, and I said, you know what? You know what's lacking? Is that the education that we got in the Philippines it's not being recognized here. 
And that was where I, I had an idea where, why don't I develop a training program specifically for Filipinos in the UK that would bridge that gap, that education gap between the Philippine degree and the requirements for working in the UK. And that was where I decided I'd take my master's at the University of Oxford. Really, I was thinking of going to the States for my MBA, but I said, nope, I'm going to the UK, all right, because of these OFWs. My thesis in this uh, degree earned a distinction because it was all about helping the Filipino workers all across England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. It was absolutely mind-blowing seeing the Filipinos start enrolling in these classes. I was doing these for free and helping them get jobs in HSBC or in British Petroleum and all these big companies in the UK. So for me, and that was where it opened doors for all across Europe and North America for me to speak to a lot of women that it is not enough for us to just sit in our cocoon and hide in our cocoon and not do anything. Even Louis Vuitton, Moet Hennessy in, in the UK and in Paris have invited me to speak to their hundreds of women employees because a lot of them do not believe in themselves. So what is the decision that I made from this story? That was to continue to discover the best version of yourself and inspire others to do the same. So with those three decisions, let me remind you of that photo I showed you at the very beginning where the roots are holding on to the soil. Whatever it is you're going through right now, whether it's physical abuse, mental abuse, um, whatever, verbal abuse, there is always something that you could do. I, I'm not saying that leave your husbands or leave your, I'm not saying that, but at least get to know yourself, make time for you to rediscover yourself earn that self-respect and self-love. So I'd like to end with this little story about this butterfly that was hidden in a jar. So there was a, a, an experiment done by a group of elementary students and the butterfly was actually placed in a jar and it was trying to get out of the jar. When they tried to um, uh, lock him up, he was trying to push himself out. Day two, they observed that the butterfly was flying in the middle of the jar. And on day three, it was already flying at the bottom of the jar. So what they did was try to open the lid. And guess what happened? The butterfly didn't even go out of the jar. And that was exactly what happened to me for almost two years. I was in a marriage. I was in that jar. I was a butterfly. I had a bright future. I was so excited about life, got into this marriage. And then all of a sudden, slowly, because I was in that very scary place, I started to lose my wings and not even use my wings and don't even bother looking outside anymore until such time that there was one voice in my head that said, you know what, open that lid, Tinet, get out, do something beautiful for others and think of outside yourself. So ladies, whatever it is that you are going through, I hope that this talk has inspired you and given you some light and inspiration and hopefully some motivation to really do something not just for yourself but for others as well so with that thank you very much my name is Tanette Cortez and if you are interested again to take a look at our website please feel free to visit the website that you could see on the screen thank you so much and have a great evening And if I may go back to what our president said earlier in her opening remarks, she said, and I quote, there's nothing stronger than a broken woman who has rebuilt herself. And this is basically what our speaker has done. So I'm sure that you will be more, you will be very excited also to hear from the next speaker and to introduce her, may I call on Maria Teresa E. Palacios, Area 5 Vice Chair, Z and Golden Z from the Santa Club of Las Piñas.
Good evening, fellow Songshans and friends. It is a great pleasure for me to introduce our speaker, who is going to talk about the power of positive affirmation, a topic deeply interesting to all of us. Our speaker is a woman whose life has been transformed by the power of speech. She is a personal coach and trainer to executives, sales and marketing managers, and to individuals who desire to succeed in their professional and personal lives. She has written two best-selling books, namely, How to Develop a Winning Personality in Beyond Looking Good. She was trained and mentored by two stalwarts in their fields, Dr. Dennis Whitley, who is the author of Winner's Age. She was also trained and mentored by Ms. Carla Mason Mattis of Body Beautiful, a U.S. image consulting firm under whose tutelage she mastered color, style, enhancement, business etiquette, protocol, and graces. As an advocate of work-life balance, she sees to it that despite her hectic schedule and her active involvement with several professional organizations, she still has the quality time for her children and grandchildren. Before going to where she is today, our speaker had ended her marriage, teenage marriage in 1972, after 10 years, and became a single mother to her son, Dino, and daughter, Germain. In 1990, she left the corporate world to start her own training and consultancy business the Southeast Asia Speakers and Trainers Bureau. She is also known as a woman of many firsts. She's the first Filipina internationally recognized as a professional speaker and trainer. And in Toastmasters International, she's the first woman district governor, the first woman distinguished Toastmaster, and the first woman to bring honors to the Philippines by winning the prestigious Distinguished District Governor's Award in 1989. Her passion is touching people in most positive ways. She is now ready to touch us, to transform our lives to be more empowered Songshans, complete and priceless. My fellow Songshans and friends, please welcome Ms. Dinah Loomis. Thank you. Thank you. And guess what? Jeanette and I have almost parallel life stories because I got out of a very rough marriage myself, but it took me 10 years, it took me longer, and I had two children as a result. Along the way, I discovered Toastmasters International, and I discovered Dr. Dennis Waitley of the Winner's Edge. Self-affirmation. So why is it that some people reach the top in spite of all odds while others falter and fail even with the support of others? And the answer is the power of positive affirmation. Why is that so powerful? Because it's talking to yourself. It's integrating, internalizing what you want to happen instead of what you don't want to happen. There is a secret though. You need to discover how to script your thoughts the right way <laughs> because a lot of people don't realize how to do affirmations. The thing is, 
we need to practice it on a daily basis. There is what we call scripting. So initially, of course, we're not used to it. So we need to write it down and not just say blindly uh, anything that comes to your mind, but rather have the discipline to say it the right way. Because when you say, I need to stop smoking, I need to lose weight, I've got to stop losing money. Guess what? Our minds cannot grasp the stop, but it will focus on that which you don't want to happen because of the way you wrote it, because of the way you thought it. So here's how to do it the right way. You see, we cannot concentrate on the reverse of, a, of an idea. When you say, I want to lose weight, the word weight is there, so it's going to stay there. So instead, here's what we're going to say. We're going to say, I weigh a slim trim, 120 pounds. Now also, there are guidelines for using affirmations. So how does that go? Use personal pronouns like I, me, and my, because it will help you to internalize it. And it will really stick in your mind and in your heart and in your spirit. So here's how it goes. Ineffective affirmation again. People are fun to be around. Time is money. It's so nebulous, it will not touch you. So change it to the effective way. I enjoy being around people. I am well organized and efficient. See, it goes straight to what you want, not to what you don't desire. And it will touch the prefrontal cortex of your brain, which will then trigger the emotions that will push you to do the steps necessary to make it happen. So, Keep your positive affirmations also in the present tense. Referring to the past and the future dilutes the impact of your talk. So here's how it goes. You cannot say someday I will be successful or I am better disciplined than them. No. How you say it will be? I am successful as if it's already happening i am well disciplined as if it's already there direct your positive affirmation towards what you desire not away from what you don't want you want to focus your current dominant thoughts on your desires not your dislikes so remember uh you, you know even at home i'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this. You can, for example, my helper, I noticed that many times when I tell her, this is a very delicate fabric, please don't burn it. Next thing I know, she comes crying, I'm sorry, I burned it. Oh my gosh, why did I mention the word burn? So what I did was when I learned about this from Dr. Wakeley, I said, this is a very delicate fabric. Here's what you do. Get, the, get an extra cloth, put it on top, and before you put on uh, the iron, not directly, and just, just be very careful. So after that, I never had burnt dresses anymore. And by the way, for those parents who will tell their children, don't jump on the bed, you can be sure, the moment you turn your backs, they will start jumping on the bed again. So the way to say it is, when you jump on the bed, the bed will sag. You'll have a very uncomfortable bed. So that, that way, their mind is focused on what's going to happen. And you can see, I can quit smoking, but the smoking is there. I, I will lose 20 pounds. I won't worry anymore. The effective way to say it is, I am in control of my habits. 
I weigh a slim trim, 120 pounds. I feel confident. I am an optimistic person who looks forward to each day with spirit and enthusiasm. Stay only, think only about that which you want to be, not what you don't want to happen. And focus on your own goals. Stop comparing yourself with others because a lot of people look at themselves, oh my gosh, how come I cannot be like her? I cannot be like them. No, focus on your own life, your own goals. And instead of saying, I will become vice president before she does, say you're getting somebody else into the picture, you are going to say, I am vice president fully capable of fulfilling my responsibilities. This will again touch the prefrontal cortex part of your brain that will trigger your emotions that will push you to take the steps necessary to make it come true. So develop your own positive instant replay. Depends on your level of self-esteem some of us, by the way, there are only two types of self-esteem, the high and the low. Uh -uh, there's no mid self-esteem. So if you have a high self-esteem, you perform well. Of course, you say, just as I expected. I knew it. But if you have a low self-esteem, you perform well. Oh, I was just lucky. If you have high self-esteem, you did not perform well. You simply say, I'll do better next time. That's not like me. So let me share with you a story of this woman who was given only six months to live because she was discovered to have a breast cancer. But this woman has a very deep faith and she said no the lord the lord will save me so what she did was she went out of her porch every day looked at the sky shouted at the top of her voice and said thank you lord thank you for healing me thank you lord for making me well again she did this every day for 30 days. And at the end of the 30 days, she started to feel so much lighter, so much better. And she called her doctor and said, Doctor, I have a feeling I'm well. Doctor said, oh, uh, uh, you come, you come, and I'm going to give you an examination. So she went to the clinic of the doctor, and the doctor said, huh, let's have a lab test to be sure. And so a, ser a series of tests were done on her. And he could not believe the results because there was no sign of cancer. So he did another set of tests. No sign of cancer. Such is the power of faith. And when you believe, you truly believe. And she asked it from our living God and God restored her so nothing is impossible the power of positive affirmation we're the master of our own destiny yes and let's stay connected we are here for you thank you thank you Zonta thank you Zonta Paranyake and Zonta Las Piñas and thank you Zonta International Jeanette and I are really delighted to share our life stories with you. And yes, indeed. So remember, your future is in your hands. It doesn't belong to anybody else. And never allow to somebody else to put you down. <laughs> you lift yourself up initially it might be awkward because you're not used to talking to yourself in that way. But guess what? Look at yourself in the mirror every day. 
and look at the best version of yourself and say you are that person. So we now call probably on Isabel, yes, for the Q&A. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much, Chuck, Tina, and Tinette for your very, very powerful sharing uh, and words of wisdom. Very, very uh, impressive. Uh, we're very touched. I'm personally very touched. So thank you. And um, so now we come to another portion. There interesting portion of our question and answer we'll have uh, we'll be addressing the questions to either miss Dina or Tinet. and uh, if there are any questions uh, please flash uh, raise your electronic hand or uh, text it in the chat chat box and uh, okay so for our first question We'd like to address it to uh, Dinah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, yeah. Following your advice for positive uh, affirmations, what if, despite practicing this positive attitude, life still sucks, which is, Difficult personal circumstances and challenges still prevail in family, work, business, personal relationships, etc. How should we deal with maintaining or continue to maintain the yeah. right positive attitude to mm -hmm. deal with this? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Isabel. Two things. Honestly, you. I hope. Uh, the person asking that goes to church or at least ask for advice from a priest or a pastor because faith has a lot to do also with our resilience. And the second step, and this is so important and critical, and in fact, it makes everybody feel stronger, is to get a life coach and mentor. <laughs> you, you can ask me or Tinez, either of us, you know, you just get in touch with us and we, I actually I have some some friends all the way Cebu and Mindanao who asked me to coach them, but it's online, and, and so that's fine. And anything bothersome, for example, you tried you tried something and it didn't work, you can ask. And then for so the next session, you will be will be giving you. I'm sure that's how Tonette will do it also will be giving you some suggestions on what to do. And if you find it doesn't work, then in the next session, we'll have some more discussions and steer you towards the path, you know, that's really the best for you. So in other words, some people seem to be able to just do it by themselves, but very few can do that. So you need a guide, a mentor, a coach, a trainer. Mm -hmm. And lots of prayers. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Diana, for that uh, answer. The next question that I have here is uh, for Miss Tinette. Tinette Cortez. Tinet, uh, what was your greatest challenge in taking that uh, big leap to finally leave or escape from your uh, seemingly hopeless predicament? Um, this is about the, the biggest challenge actually was not knowing what's ahead of me. It's always the fear of the unknown. But only then will you realize your potential if you actually face and embrace as I've mentioned, what's in front of you. Um, overthinking actually is the most, 
it's my worst quality. I kept overthinking what might happen, what could happen, what would other people think. That was actually, it, I was actually my biggest challenge because my mindset wasn't really right at that time. But as I've mentioned, there were three decisions that I made. Just jump into it. You cannot change your circumstances, really. But you can always change the way you respond to your circumstances. So that's what I did. I just took the pain, felt it, embraced the pain, and found my way of dealing with it and overcoming it. I, I cannot avoid it. I, I would rather... Uh, feel the pain of separation than the fear of uh, than the pain of uh, you know lifelong punishment in that marriage or lifelong torture along with my daughter so yes life is not easy life is going to throw stones and big rocks at you but it's just all a matter of developing your skills and facing and overcoming these challenges thank you thank you Tinea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can we have more questions from uh, from our attendees, please? Okay, I have another one here. Address again to uh, Tinet. What advice can you give young women? in choosing their life partner <clears throat> to avoid getting in this kind of a predicament yes uh yes miss isabel i if i were to live my life again and go back to the younger Tinette, i would give the same advice as i am giving to my 18 year old daughter now that the number one thing is you really have to develop that sense of self-love and self-worth because um, if you have that, you will be able to define the boundaries by which your partner can, you know, can, can respect. Because if you do not have those boundaries, if we are always living in a state of desperation or, or, or lack, you know, I want a love life, I want a boyfriend, I want a husband, I want to be married and be pressured by society, but without you having that strong foundation in you, it's going to falter because that's what happened to me. I, I didn't have that sense of self strong enough. My, my identity was based merely on how my brothers treated me, but not so much of how a woman should be. <laughs> my relationship with my parents was really good, but my advice to younger women is know yourself, develop your self-love. How do you do that? Make time for yourself, just like how you're going to have a boyfriend. You spend time with your boyfriend. You give him gifts. You give him attention. You give him time. So give that to yourself first. Because if you, if you have that in you, you will attract the right man. You will attract the right person who will give you that respect. Um, unfortunately, Miss Isabel, when I look at the social media uh, platforms these days, women are, all, like, especially younger women would always put it out there, I'm single, I'm lonely. You know, just by putting it that way, you are already attracting perpetrators because you are lonely and they want to take advantage of that. So just like a human resource professional is trying to recruit and profile candidates for a company, that's how we should do it when we're choosing a life partner. So that would be my advice for the younger ones. Thank you for, for that uh, reply. Welcome. There's another question here that's, uh, okay. Why, address to uh, Miss Tinette again. While you were still dating, were there any telltale, telltale signs or indications about are uh, your partners, your boyfriends, abusive or violent behavior? Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. Miss Isabel, at that time, there were no violent tendencies, but he was very jealous all the time. So that already, when I look back, that, was, that should have been a sign already for me. But because I was in love, because I was in denial and 
you know, I, I, I was like this. <laughs> so I didn't want to accept the fact that, oh, it's okay. He's jealous because he loves me. But in reality, he was already trying to control me. He wanted me to, to move within his world and not in, my, in our world. So that was, only the, that was actually the only sign. Other than that, he was very, very sweet, romantic. And later on, when I started abuse, it's really a cycle, you know, they try to be the prince charming, you know, and then they try to control you. And then when you're already around their finger, then they're going to start to beat you up, not just physically, but even psychologically without you knowing it. So yes, my answer is, if uh, my partner was very, very jealous, very possessive. So that was the only sign. Thank you. Um, what about, uh, are there any, any other questions from, uh, from the floor, from our, uh, attendees or guests? Uh, I guess, um, uh, Miss Dinette and Miss Dinah really delivered their, uh, presentations and speeches very well and very clear and actually, uh, very touching. Okay, uh, to everybody, I believe many uh, women, young girls can probably relate with your experiences. And these are powerful uh, lessons uh, that came from you, Miss Tinette, as well as Miss Dinah. We're really uh, very touched. There's another question here. After leaving the abusive, uh, hang on, please. After leaving the abusive relationship, what advice could you give to other women who also experience the same? This is for Miss Tinette. Okay. After leaving the relationship, really find yourself again. I think that's the most important thing. Because the only reason why we have allowed the abuse to take place is because we've really lost you know, our sense of selves already. So find yourself, find a passion. Um, if you love art or painting, do it. If you love music, play a musical instrument, learn a foreign language, you know, really try to rediscover yourself, rekindle that relationship with you. Don't look for a new partner just yet. Don't look for a new partner just yet. That's the worst that could happen is that after you leave a relationship, you're going to look for another one to, to fill up the gap or to, <clears throat> to complete the feeling. And, it's, and, and here you are with all the baggage and all the drama bringing into that man's life again. And then it's going to be another cycle of abuse. So my advice is cut the pattern, break the pattern, rekindle your relationship with yourself, develop a hobby, and then allow the universe just to let it flow. The proper guy will flow back to you. So... Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Miss Joanna. Also for that question. I have a question here for Dina Isabel. Mm -hmm. All you. right. Um, Dina. Can you give us some examples of uh, positive affirmations for women who want to be more empowered and confident? All right. There are many areas of our life, you see. So you first you need to focus on which are the most important ones because, you know, being a human being, you cannot just focus on all areas of your life at once. So at this stage in your life, you got to pinpoint which are the first, second, third most important areas of your life. Then you start already thinking of how do I want to be in that particular, for example, financial, all right? Let's just put it this way. A lot of people are having financial troubles. So instead of saying, I want to... I want to earn more money. Instead of saying, I want to earn more money, you simply say, I am a magnet for opportunities, for financial opportunities or growth, for financial growth. 
I attract people who will pave the way for me to grow financially. It's really more of what you want to happen and then say it in a way as if it's already happening. It's like you can feel it, you can smell it, you can touch it. Uh, not in the future or in the past. It's like it's there. It's there. So always say it in the present tense as if it's already there. So when it comes, for example, to love life, I mean, uh, let, me, let me give you an example of a lady friend who was a high-powered executive in, in a bank, in a global bank, and men were so scared of her because she's super intelligent. So she came to me and said, uh, nobody wants to support me. They're all afraid of me. So I said, okay, look at yourself in the mirror every day and say, all right. So I said, do it with action. Look at the mirror. I'm sexy. I'm magnetic. I'm irresistible. <laughs> Men are attracted to me. Uh, it's, say it as if it's already there. Before the month was over, she said, I have a different problem. I said, what? Now I have two men and I like them both. So, so she said, how should I choose? Don't let it worry. No, it's not, it's not a worry. She said, what do, you, what do you mean? I have to have only one. I said, yeah, but in the meantime, you can jo enjoy the two. And then until you decide who is the better one, all right? So you know what? She finally got married and she has children and she went to, to America and, uh, you know, she now has grandchildren. <laughs> so it, it's really a matter of pinpointing what you want and then say to yourself, either before a mirror, with, which is what I told that friend of mine, say it before a mirror and it, it happened or say it to yourself when you're alone and you can also have a beautiful relaxing music in the background my favorite is uh, you can go to youtube my favorite is one with gargling water you know and birds chirping oh my god it's so, it's so relaxing and then say say those self affirmations uh, put yourself in a very relaxed state and say the affirmation some people do it while lying down uh, whatever whatever state that makes you most comfortable and that you like to do. So, yeah, I'm sure it will it will happen. Yeah, just say it also from the heart, from the spirit, knowing that it's going to happen. Yeah, thank, thank you, you. Diana. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my pleasure. My pleasure. We have a question here from the chat box. The question comes from uh, Carol Balotro. This is a question for Tinet. Yeah. Tinet, does the spa that you set up still exist? If it does, how can we refer abuse women? Okay, uh, Miss Angela, actually I was chatting with Miss Carol privately and I've already answered the question. So the spa actually was sold back in 2008 and I believe that they're um, doing tie-ups with hotels. Uh, I've lost touch with them in 2010 after the father who bought it from me passed away. But I believe they still have tie-ups with the hotels now. But during the pandemic, I believe that the, since the hotels were almost all closed, they've slowed down. But slowly now, they're getting back on track. So I'll try to find out who is running it now. And I'm more than happy to uh, send the number if I'm able to track them. Yeah, because we deal a lot of... Uh... Uh, with abused women, and in fact, some of our clubs they have shelters for for uh, rescued uh, traffic trafficked women and abused women. So this is a good, uh, uh, I think, help and uh, livelihood, and uh, to also for their self esteem to be able to recover their self. It's worth. Yes. Thank you. Yes, and also, Miss Carol, if I may add, if if uh, you find some value, because I still have contacts for uh, spa and salon trainers, uh, 
I'm more than happy to sponsor that. I mean, if you have domestically abused women in your shelters, I'm more than happy to sponsor it myself, provide training for them, and then have them employed by spas owned by my you know, contacts. That's not a problem. I'm more than happy to help. That would be great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, our Santa Club of Pasig, they take care of trafficked women. Yes. They have a center for that. And also our Santa Club of Makati, they take care of the women in Marilac Hills. So that would be a good input. Yes, Miss yes, uh, Carol. And it's not just massage or nails. There yeah. can also be other skills. Like a lot of them yeah. want to do, let's say, secretarial jobs and all that. We can also do that. I'm more than willing to sponsor that. Especially us. now that we, the Bayinium is about to end. Yes. The clouds will be doing our own um, strategic planning for the next biennium. Then maybe this will keep this behind, uh, uh, keep this in mind and perhaps call for help. Thank yes. you so much. I will talk with Miss Dinah about this because we can actually collaborate in helping these women develop not only technical skills but even soft skills. So some yes. of us will be communicators by heart, and we can we can help them out as well so thank maybe you maybe we Sarah. can maybe we can also invite you in one of our training sessions for our officers yes yeah. so that they can maybe seek your guidance on how to set these things up Absolutely. thank you so much thank you calling sonia <laughs> Yes, ma'am. I had I had it in mind already, partner. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> you know, Sonia when you have, our uh, you know, when, training guru. When you see a gem, don't lose it. Look for a uh, hold it in your hand and keep it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we have and, gems tonight. Yeah. By the way, congratulations because I noticed the participants did not leave. They're still there. I saw the yeah. number. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, uh, I've been to a lot of zoom events and be, before like halfway yeah <laughs> most most attendees are gone mm -hmm. but uh, this has been very well appreciated by your viewers so um, Jeanette and i are just so delighted with this chito has raised her hand yeah Tinet. actually this is also directed to you i just want to know after that um traumatic experience with your abusive husband have you ever considered getting to another relationship or what i i, I have the impression that uh, instead of that you decided to you know to go into further studies or to to make yourself more productive instead of getting to what is that your way of coping or was it intentional or what made you decide on, 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 on probably not getting into any relationship, if at all that was your decision? Oh, actually, ma'am, I am already in a very happy relationship for one year now, um, a mature relationship. So um, after I left my husband, uh, I did not have that mindset. That's why my advice to the young ladies earlier is not to look for a a replacement because then you're just doing a band-aid fix so it took me years to find myself again that's why i pushed myself in, in in the way that i've described earlier you know trying to work globally you know dealing with ofws doing charity work you know trying to close the most difficult clients you know doing uh, scuba diving you know, just doing things that that made me believe in myself again and that's why I speak from the heart when I say that when you are already in that um, zone of self-respect and self-love, you will just attract a wonderful person, which I have last year in the most unexpected way. Because I wasn't, I wasn't really looking. I wasn't. Everybody was trying to set me up with everybody, and I said, "It's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll find somebody." And just you know, just like that, at the height of the pandemic, you know, a beautiful relationship blossomed. So. So yes, ma'am, um, I, I didn't close myself, but I also wasn't rushing myself into it. So, so yes. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm sure a lot of you heard 
so much insights and the sharings by Dina. And for me, I was trying to write down everything that she said, and it's really so much to to keep in my notebook. And, and I'm sure that a lot of you would, would want to review each and everything that we shared that she shared from here. So at this point, I'd like everyone to know that uh, Dinah has actually published two books and uh, maybe Carol can, can also show that, that book. So people who may want uh, to buy or, or something, we can, we can, everything is there. And I, I, I personally uh, looked through the, the leaves of the, the book and I'm, I'm so inspired. I wish I had read that book before when I was younger. <laughs> Thank Not you. bad, really, because I became a lawyer, but I yeah, could have been better course. than yeah. that, or maybe a lot better than than what I've achieved still. So maybe, Carol, can you just flash it? I, I don't know if Carol has it with her. I, I took a photo of it, so that, oh, that's okay. one. Yeah. Okay. So the title is uh, Beyond Looking Good. So actually we have prepared some, some trivia and uh, maybe Gigi can, can uh, take care of it. So we are prepared to, to give uh, the books, of course, uh, of uh, Dinah. And um, we will basically ask you to give the answer and the first one who gets the right answer in the chat box? Oh, okay. we will we will give a, a book of Dinah. So, so we don't want that, to we don't want actually to end this without uh, leaving beyond uh, leaving behind some nice things about this wonderful experience with our with our speakers. We've learned a lot, but uh, you know sometimes we have to remind ourselves. So, okay, so may I turn this over to Gigi. Some here about, about uh, uh, famous, famous women, a trivia question on famous women. This will be very easy for Sonshans like us. Who is the first female aviator to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean? Who is the first? Oh, yeah, we got it. She got, oh, okay. The first one who gave the answer, Ansi Palma. Ansi. <laughs> Ansi yes. Palma. Yeah. Okay. So, correct Ansi answer Palma. is Amelia Earhart. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, we have one more question here. Um, who was the first woman to win a Nobel Prize in science and the first person to win? Two Nobel Prizes in Physics and Chemistry. Two questions? Are, are, we're very oh, this is just one question, but we're referring to one, one famous okay. woman yeah. to win a Nobel Prize in okay. Science and the first person to win two Nobel Prizes in Physics and Chemistry. Oh, we, have a we have an answer here from um, Prakset Yeah, Yeah, somebody got it. Yeah. All right. The correct answer is Madame Marie Curie. Yeah. yeah. So, so who got it first? Maybe Dan. Okay. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations, baby. baby. Okay. Do you still want some more? <laughs> <laughs> so somebody, yeah, you need to be taking note of the of Yeah, the I am. Oh. I am. Okay. Yes, please also give us your yeah. address. Yeah, you have to uh, know. You and want one have more question? That one last? One last? One, one last, last one. book? <laughs> one okay. last book, yes. All right. So who wrote the famous book, Frankenstein? Oh. <laughs> the famous woman author. Da -da 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 -da. Who wrote the famous <laughs> book Frankenstein? Da -da -da -da. Three, two, one. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the correct yeah. answer. Mary Shelley. Yeah, Shelley. Wow. 
Who, who was the who was the lucky person? President Raquel Aglawa of Central Tubigarao. Congratulations. Congratulations, Press Raquel. Galing naman ni Raquel. Galing, oh, oh. <laughs> it looks to me <laughs> like... Thank you. <laughs> anyway, before we proceed, maybe we just first ask oh, everybody. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. There's um, one for... Uh, the first one was Ruth Peñano. Yeah. Ruth. I guess we'll have to give both ladies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know what? It came at the same time. Huh? I'm, I'm, yes, I'm, yes. Yeah, same time. Oh. Yeah, it's 9.06. Oh. Oh, oh. 9.06. Oh, oh. We have oh. no choice. We have to give yeah. to both. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Your members are very well read. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's Raquel and, Chia and uh, Ruth. And for those who are not lucky enough to get the book, we yeah. have actually uh, in stock with yeah. Gigi and Tintin some yeah. books of, of uh, Dinah. So yeah. you can just message us if you want. Yeah. So to the lucky winners, that's very good for you because uh, there's a lot of things to learn, some more, and then and uh, a lot of things to keep in your heart and soul to become to become more positive in life and uh for Stinette, uh i'm sure that these positive affirmations of dinah also helped you I'm, I'm sure in um coping with your traumatic experiences maybe that's the reason why you stuck it out together and um it's nice to have somebody you know like both of you being able to share all the time your experiences and, and uh, the nice things that uh, you can do to solve your problems. And um, I guess you, you, you are able to talk to each other every day. <laughs> well, no, we, we, do have, we do have a recurring meeting in Zoom. So anytime we need to convert, <laughs> we just message each other, okay, can we meet at the, <laughs> on this day? <laughs> That, that that's very good so there is something also that we have noted that uh you know that that there's some something that in you dina that that it, it is really very remarkable like you know you're you're known for having the hat woman yeah. and um the way you carry yourself it, it, it shows that, that there are a lot of callers may know exactly the reason why this is so this does this thing help you uplift your morale or, or, yeah, or yeah. boost your morale? Indeed. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I do have a webinar called The Psychology of Colors because a lot of people don't realize it. Sometimes they're wearing their own colors and their mood goes down because it's not the color for them. You know? And there are certain colors that will really lift the spirits up. So go for it. For example, orange really energy it's a boost of energy you want orange and do you notice how how pink is so, so it's selling because pink is love pink means love yeah <laughs> and uh, yellow yellow is optimism yeah the sun <laughs> yes so there, there are many uh, in fact in it has been studied that uh, there are certain doctors who made who made studies about colors and there were certain surgeries that they had to use a particular color to to make the to make the surgery work no. when they use the color it's it's like uh, the first few times they did it it didn't it didn't work and then they used a particular color and the color that i read in the the time that i read that that particular chapter in that book, Psychology of Colors, is the color blue. You know, when when they use the color blue for the the light that was used in the surgery, for some reason it just it was just right, mm -hmm. and the surgery was very successful. Great. And by the way, the color that you've chosen, all right, purple, you want to know what that is? Mm -hmm. Royalty. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Wow. There was a time, all right, in the ancient times, they decreed the kings and the queens, you know, they decreed that this was in England, they decreed that commoners who will make the mistake of wearing purple, which is only for royalty, was put in prison and some of them were hanged. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it was prohibited. But for people who persisted in wearing it, they, <laughs> they, got, they got punished for it. Yeah. So the color purple, when you choose that, it's also one of the best ways to relax your muscles. For example, you're feeling muscle pains. Any part of your body, either you wear the color purple or you look at the drape with purple shade, immediately your muscles will start to relax. It's wow. an instant. Yeah. It relaxes the muscles. So as a matter of fact, it's a very good color. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, you must have chosen it for something, but I don't know, it's like purple. Oh, okay, I got purple. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. uh, black, of oh, course, is the most domineering and it, it puts, well, unless it's a very formal event, but it puts people off because it's, it's like you're trying to do to be there it's like you're trying to put one over them and you know power over them so as much as possible unless it's a very formal meeting i said uh, avoid the color black because people just get turned off by it unless it is a formal event yeah okay, okay. why yeah you ever wonder why you ever wonder why Doctors, nurses wear white mm -hmm. because white means noble purpose, purity. Oh, yes. Purity. So immediately in your mind, when you see the doctor or the nurse and they're wearing white, you immediately trust them. Trustworthy, noble. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it, it's good to know about colors as well. Yeah. So by the way, even without anyone telling you, all right, you put on something. And when you feel, mm, you know, you're not comfortable, take it off. It's not for you. Your body, your body is telling you it's not for you. Your, mm. your intuition, your, your, what we call the, the system in your body is telling you mm, that color is, is bad for you. So as much as possible when you when you put something on and you don't feel right just take it off put something on that makes you feel better and when you want to make sure that the color you're wearing is the best for you so take a look at the mirror if your face glows you know you you shine you glow you sparkle that color is good for you it brings out the color in your the the sparkle the glow Jeanette, that's a very nice color on you. See, you're glowing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a very nice color on you. Oh, because she's in love. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Dina. <laughs> Actually, for some of us, we just wear black, not because of, of, of what you've said, that, uh, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, we just want to look slimmer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Hide the flubs. If everybody is wearing hide, black, hide all the flubs. Yeah. If everybody's wearing black, it's it's fine. It's just <laughs> that when you're in a group of people, yeah. you're wearing black, the others are not. It's like, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Correct, They're, correct. Uh, Depends also on the uh, yeah. location. Right, right. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> wow, it's, this has been a grand time, and I thank you so much. You know, thank you. Before, oh. we, before we end, may I just ask everybody to turn on your video oh, yes. camera. Photo off. Uh, actually we have done we should have done this earlier because yeah. we tried right <laughs> can, can you just turn on your camera so we can take a photo uh -huh. so let's see who can take the photo with me so we'll we'll start with one okay 
Give us your best smile. Okay. <laughs> okay. Please turn on your cameras, please. Okay. Sonia, Malu, Julie, please turn on your cameras. Okay, so I'll proceed now. Okay, next one. I'm wearing purple. Oh, nice. Yeah. 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 I, I like okay. the background, yeah. Okay. Purple, yellow, yeah. Okay, okay, smile, smile again. Okay, so... I guess I'm, I'm not so sure. Maybe Sonia can actually enlighten us because I know that the reason why we're wearing purple is because it is um, associated with the Women's Month or oh, something. Oh, I see. I see. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. It, it, well, it's a very good color. Relaxing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, so thank you. Maybe because you said it represents power. I'm, I'm not so sure. Wait, was that what you said? Diana? Royalty. A royalty. Yeah, oh, it, royalty. So, yeah, it's the so color of royalty. Yeah, yeah. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It's very difficult to remember. That's why we need a book as reference. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is there any book about colors? Um, actually, I, I do have a webinar on colors, and that's one of the things that I'm compiling now the, the psychology of colors. And I, I want it to, to really pay particular because you see. Uh, different colors appeal to different uh, skin tones. So really, you need to watch out your skin tone because it depends on your skin tone, then that's when you know that particular color really looks good on you. And the way to do that is before you buy any blouse, anything at the top. Now, never mind at the bottom. I mean, people will not look there. But it, before you buy, drape, drape the blouse, drape the dress, right under your face if your face glows when you drape yourself with that color or dress that's good for you it, sometimes there are colors you you put it on like that and you grow pale don't buy it if you grow pale it's not for you yeah. okay so okay um uh, wait, are you still taking photos, huh? No, no, no we're done. We're done. Dana, we're Dana. Okay, okay. Anyway, Chito, yeah. I think we have to proceed with the yeah. first Chito. Ah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. Wow, I love it. And look at that. I <laughs> love it. Look at Where's that. Chito? Yeah, and it has the maroon colors too. Yes. Yeah. Where's Very Chito? Nice. Very nice. Okay, so... Of course, uh, at this point, we'd like to to call on Tintin or the president yeah, of Santa Club of Parañaque to present our certificate of appreciation first to Tinet. Tintin, may I may we call him? Yeah. Can you please come in to present this. Is Tintin <coughs> still there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Yes, please do the honors. Okay. The Santa Club of Paranaque and Santa Club of, of Las Piñas um, presents the Certificate of Appreciation to Tinette Car Cortez for generously sharing her time, expertise, and insights as resource speaker in the webinar Uplifting Women to be Complete and Priceless in celebration of the International Women's Month. Given this 26th day of March 2022 in Manila, Philippines. Signed, Maria Cristina Barreto, Santa Club of Paranaque, and Angela Libranda, President, Santa Club of Las Piñas. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Tintin. Thank you, Ms. Angela. Thank you so much, Santa. Thank, thank you, too, for, for, for gracing our, our webinar. Thank you. Thank you. So we will need we will need your addresses. Of course, I will co coordinate with um, yeah. Isabel. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Tintin will be sending you also her uh, to die for cheesecakes. <laughs> oh, wow. Cheese roll. Cheese rolls, yeah. Oh. <laughs> In case you don't know, she's, uh, uh, maybe Tintin, you can talk about it for a while so, so they can look forward to it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, let, let Gigi first... Uh... Okay. okay. And then, so um, 
So we will have uh, for the next one, Diana, of course. And uh, for this, may I call on Gigi, Angela Libranda from the, from the Santa Club of Las Piñas to award the Certificate of Appreciation. The Certificate of Appreciation to Diana Lewis for generously sharing her time expertise and insights as resource speaker in the webinar uplifting women to be complete and priceless in celebration of the international women's month given this 26th day of march 2022 in manila philippines signed maria cristina barreto president santa club of paranaque and yours truly angela de Brada, president of santa club of las piñas Thank you so much, Diana, and congratulations. Okay, so I guess uh, it's mm -hmm. 9, 9.19. Yes. And um, we've kept you, and then thank you so much for your time. So for the closing remarks, may I again call Angela Libranda from the Zonta Club of Las Piñas to do the close, to do the honors. Good evening, everyone. We are profoundly grateful to our esteemed speakers, Tinette Cortez, Global Coach Trainer, and Dina Loomis, President and CEO of Southeast Asia Speakers and Trainers Bureau. Assumptions, let us stand up against abusers and stand up for survivors. Women and girls deserve to live free from abuse. With webinars such as tonight's, speaking openly about abuse helps create a culture where victims feel supported and abusers cannot hide in the shadow. On the other hand, positive affirmations are a huge part of our personal development. As women, we might have forgotten to celebrate just how wonderful we are. Let us include positive affirmations in our daily routine to allow us to cultivate a positive self-image and boost our self-esteem. Thank you to our district governor, Pam Osatanugra, to whom we pay tribute in this webinar for her support to women's rights. To past international president, Levy Ferry, to our district treasurer, Susan Lim, A.D. Lisette Lim, V.A.D. Odette Wallace, area secretary, Ann Palma, and the Quarant Queen Presidents and their club members and Z and Golden Sea Clubs for joining tonight's webinar. Let me also extend our appreciation to our Santa sisters from the different areas and our like-minded organizations for joining as well. Special thanks to the organizing committee members, Santa Club of Paranaque Charter President Chito Chavez, past area director, and District Secretary Carol Balocho, my co quarantine queen, Tintin Barreto, and most especially to Isabel Gonzalez, Advocacy Chair of Santa Club of Paranaque for making this webinar possible. As we culminate the celebration of International Women's Month, it is our fervent hope to live in a gender equal world, free of biases, stereotypes, and discriminations. Let us empower all women as we all make a positive difference for them and continue to examine the opportunities as well as the constraints to empower women and girls to have a voice and be equal players in decision making. Good night to everyone and have a restful weekend to all. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you to Gigi, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Gigi. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lina, so and thank you, Tinette. Okay. And thank you, everyone, for thank joining you. us tonight. Good night. Thank you, Lani, and, and thank you, thank everyone. Thank you for staying. Yes. Oh, we'll be in touch. We'll be in touch. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, Tina. Thank you very much. Night. Thank you. Thank you, Edi Terry. Bad Lorna. Nani Mone. Yeah, Tinette is still here. Thank you for your thank you, sharing. Thank you. Thank, thank you, baby doll. Beautiful.
Beautiful Thank webinar. You so Thank you. Thanks, Ms. Carol. Thank you, Roger. Have a safe weekend. Yeah. Bye. You too. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. God bless. <clears throat> <laughs>